hello hello and welcome back to another video i'm so glad to see you and i hope you are having an amazingly wonderful time week weekend holiday whether you're back to work whichever and my hair is escaping whoops <laughs> i uh, actually straightened my hair for plans that is today but i feel like it's just made it even frizzier than normal but i mean i tried to straighten it and make it look neat and now it's just a uh, I think I really, really need to go to the hairdressers to get a trim, so. But, anyway, the light is kind of funny. I feel like the light is super bright, but it's honestly not even on, like, a high setting. Hopefully this isn't massively overexposed. I kind of feel like it might be. But, um, I'm a little bit stressed. <laughs> you might see a bit of a, a lot of stuff and chaos behind me. And I have like three weeks, only three weeks, in which I'm supposed to get rid of nearly everything to head down to Melbourne. <laughs> so like the plan is Melbourne in only three weeks time and I still have so much stuff and I haven't packed the clothes that I'm keeping in my suitcase or prepared which clothes I'm donating, which ones I'm giving away, maybe a couple of things I might be selling because this last year, well, the last six, seven months, I put on a significant amount of weight. So I know there are a bunch of dresses that just won't fit me anymore. And a couple of them are kind of like expensive dresses that I haven't really been able to wear since like 2020. <laughs> I started putting on weight in 2020 and it, you know it just continued last year I'm not gonna stress about that though because you just lose it you can lose it not a big deal I had amazing times and amazing memories and some very delicious food because I was hanging out much more with people human beings it wasn't like completely isolated all the time and hanging out with my sister and having delicious meals was worth the weight gain so I am not regretting it or anything but there's probably not much point in me packing clothes that don't currently fit me when I am literally going to be restricted to two suitcases and one backpack. And that's going to be everything I own. Like I am doing the massive minimalism thing. When I am moving down to Melbourne, I'm going to have two suitcases, one backpack. I might put a couple of stuffed animals like in a cardboard box and post it down. Uh, that's not 100% decided yet. I, I feel like I will. I feel like I can't get rid of all my stuffed animals just yet. And I also have like a couple of Barbies and stuff that I want to bring down. I like sentimental items that can be posted because they're stuffed animals. They're not like fragile. But all in all, I'm going to go down for only two suitcases and one backpack. And I got three weeks to finish getting rid of everything. And see that big thing there? That pink, white and blue thing right here? That is my silicon mermaid tail, professional mermaid tail that was custom made to me. It weighs almost 15 kilograms. It's over two meters long. And because it's so heavy, it's not something you can post. But because it's a proper silicon mermaid tail, it's also not something I want to just like toss out. These things cost thousands of dollars and they're kind of difficult for people to get. So, I mean, if someone is the size that I was then and can wear it, because again, it's probably too small for me. I feel like it's better to just sell it really, really, really cheap. Or at the very least, it's got a Finnis Pro Monofin in it. Like, if I can't sell it, should I just cut into the silicon and save the Monofin? But then I'll end up destroying a silicon mermaid towel, which let's face it, that's like a type of artwork. That's desecrating artwork. Especially since it was the very first water song mermaid towel that was ever made. I even went to America to pick it up and everything. But um, yeah, it doesn't fit me at the moment either. Well, not very well. So, and it weighs so much and it's so big. Like, it's just not practical for me to take down to Melbourne. So I have all this stuff that I have to get rid of and pack. And I've got like three weeks left. And on top of that, the reason I did my hair is because after not having a real job, like a regular real job in like... What is it? Almost 15 years. In 12 years. No regular job in 12 years. I've been like freelancing and self-employed for 12 years. I have decided I'm going to try and go for a regular job. Like a typical 9 to 5. Which again, I have not had in 12 years. My last real job was back when I was a student and working at McDonald's. <laughs> like it was a long, long time ago. It was 
retail and hospitality and fast food which I guess isn't really on the same thread as like a real job. I mean, a part of me wants to work in a cafe in Melbourne because I feel like that's a really Melbourne thing to do, right? To work in a cafe when you're down in Melbourne. But I also kind of want to get like a real job because after being living with my sister and brother-in-law for seven months and seeing their real job and seeing how much less real jobs actually involve work, they're easier. They're literally easier. Like, they can play games in the middle of the day. They just decide to take days off. Like, honestly, honestly, real jobs seem like so much better right now. Plus, you get the consistency. You get the consistency. And that consistency and stability is something I kind of want in my life at the moment. So, um, yeah, I straighten my hair. And my brother-in-law is really into, like, the AI ch stuff. I just want to do a disclaimer, like the AI art theft, that is terrible. Like honestly, listen to artists, look it up. AI art theft is terrible. It literally steals from artist creators without their permission to make like copies of it. And then you also get a copy that has like 20 fingers on one hand. So it's not even a quality artwork. But AI art theft, not a fan. But using AI to like write things is kind of promising because I don't think it's really stealing. I mean, I haven't heard from authors saying that it's stealing their work, although I have heard issues about it like stealing writing jobs. So a few issues there, but we used AI to actually write the resume for me, which is kind of amazing. And like a cover letter. And I set up a basic LinkedIn and the reason I did my hair and found a professional black business dress. I very rarely wear black. I usually wear like colors. <laughs> um, so I can do my photo for a LinkedIn profile and see if I can get like a regular actual job using an AI resume. <laughs> but um, right now I'm going to do my makeup because I need to do my makeup for the photo for a LinkedIn resume thing so I can maybe get like a regular vanilla job before I head down to Melbourne. And because I'm stressed out and makeup is kind of pleasurable to do, I figured I'll just do a little vlog. So that's the vlog for today. Woo, hi. I actually cleaned my makeup brushes for this video. Look at that. They're all nice and clean. And if you guys want like an easy way to clean your paint brushes, paint brushes, if you want an easy way to clean makeup brushes, like I don't know if it counts as a hack, but a super duper simple way to do it. These makeup brushes are old. I have been using these brushes since pre panini times so i've been using these from like i think 2018 or 2017. so i got these in 2018 or 2017 and we are currently in 2023 i mean we just started but we are so like these are multiple years old and you couldn't really tell and they're not even like expensive brushes but one reason and look how soft so soft so soft super super soft ah they just feel so nice when you just <laughs> but yeah one reason they still look okay after all these years is because I have a really really basic simple easy way to clean them and I'm gonna share that little hack with you right now so I just get a cup I put a little bit of laundry cleaning detergent in it just the laundry powder uh, like nappy sand or whatever and I add boiling water in it and now that foams up like crazy maybe I should have been doing it to show you but I didn't think to fill my clean these and I soak my makeup white patty you know the soft things that you used to take your makeup off I soak those little eye makeup the makeup removing pads in there and then I get each brush and I just stick it in the cup and go shoo 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 and then in the other direction swoosh shoo 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 and then I take it out and rinse it out and like rinse it well under cold water I mean laundry detergent is made to be skin safe so I figured it, it's okay for your skin but rinse it out super super well and then just leave it on the windowsill to dry and that's it it literally takes me like five seconds per brush like really it's just douche douche rinse and put it down and look how clean they end up being isn't that great and then I just like squinch out the eye makeup wipe and again let that dry and it's done like I can clean all my brushes and my makeup wipey pad thing and it takes like I don't know less than 10 minutes tops from start to beginning from start to finish so 
cleaned all my brushes and there's a reason I cleaned the brushes and another reason I'm doing this video today other than being a little bit stressed out which is why I'm kind of jumping all over the place is this is the foundation I have been using and I absolutely loved it it is makeup forever HD that I am um, I think that's the brand makeup forever made in France dermatology tester yeah makeup forever website in the back so that counts so whoop, whoop, whoop. You can see how empty it is, right? Look at that. All the way down there. So empty. But yeah, I just got this at Sephora because I got told that it's really good for like content creators because it can sit under bright lights for a long time. You just, you can do minimal coverage or you can build it up really, really easily. And it's apparently it was like basically created for content creators and being under lights and streamers and cameras and all that. So I had this one because it was recommended from Sephora. But uh, I'm saving money because I'm moving to Melbourne and I've barely worked in like a couple of years. So I'm kind of broke right now. But Sephora has their own store print one. So I actually have that right now. Just whoop, got in the package. Woo. And we are going to do like a little unboxing and open it up. And I figured I'm going to try this one, which is at Sephora. This one cost... When I first bought it, it was like $80. Now you can buy it for $66. Compare the Makeup Forever one with Sephora's home brand. Does, does it count as home brand? With the Sephora branded one. Because the Sephora branded one is literally half the cost. So this one's $66 at Sephora. This new one that is just the Sephora brand is only $33. Literally 50% up. So my plan is because there's like barely anything left and it's quite difficult. Like literally it's... My camera's not picking up. This is pretty much empty. It's like the tiniest little bit on the bottom here. Since there isn't that much left, I figured since I have to do my makeup anyway, I'm going to test it out by doing like half and half. So I can do the HD makeup forever on one side and do the Sephora on the other side after I do my A makeup. And we can see if this one is truly worth twice the price of this one. So let's just open this first. This came really quickly too. I used the... Um, app to buy it so i could get take advantage of some boxing day sales arrived in the post really quickly it took like less than a week again i'm in australia and like not really in the city like towards the middle of nowhere that's that's good that's fast i used the app so i could like follow the direction and i get updates on my phone so i knew which day it was coming but um yeah let's see how this one goes this is going to be like a uh, late Christmas present to myself plus I actually did need new makeup so it was justified and worth it <gasps> what? where is it own brand one the best skin ever glow and this is like the pink shade because they had like a you can choose like a yellow shade a neutral shade or a pink shade and I wasn't honestly all that certain what that meant so I just kind of like googled it like what I should have as a pale skin redhead and apparently white skin really pale skin it's better to get a pink shade because um it basically like if you get flushed like what kind of color are your cheeks had something to do with it and if you're darker skin then you're better to get a yellow shade i'm not entirely sure who's meant to get the neutral shade but yeah i got the pinky shade one so this is sephora's best skin ever glow it's got prebiotics in it according to this it's almost the same size so this is 25 milliliters and the 66 dollar makeup forever was 30 milliliters like to be fair this 30 milliliter one lasted me just a little over a year so it lasts a whole year. So that's that was good for this. A little went a very, very long way. It lasted a long time. Obviously never used this one. Don't know how long it's going to last. But let's test these two different foundations against each other and see if this one is worth twice the price, literally, to this one. Yee! 
<laughs> so I kind of feel like I'm rambling a little bit because I didn't really plan anything out other than let's film a video at the last moment while doing a makeup before taking the photos and hey got a package wanted to open it unboxing videos are fun and um we can test it out at the same time but now I'm just gonna quickly do like my makeup for my eyebrows and eyes and we'll do all the skin at the end I used to do like my eye makeup later and then do my skin makeup but then when you get like the fallout from your eyeshadow you know how I just no matter what eyeshadow you always seem to get like the fallout that's all out down here and I found it like I was always fixing up my makeup because my eyeshadow fallout will get all over that side there so it's like why am I doing my skin before I do the eyes when I often use quite colorful eyeshadows like a lot of blues and greens and pinks and that becomes noticeable whereas if I do my eyes first I can wipe away the fallout because I have moisturizer under my face so the moisturizer on my face is like primer I just wipe off the fallout and then I put on the skin makeup and that covers anything else that might be left over so like that made sense right so we're gonna just do some quick eye makeup first and then do the skin makeup look how dead this palette is you can see which colors i'm using the most ignore the broken mirror i know seven years bad luck i accidentally stood on it but still like all the whites at the top are like empty like it's just all empty oh it's all empty but um yeah all the whites and power colors are pretty much gone and this is like just left over for the dark colors but I am not taking this palette to Melbourne because I've had it for a while so it's old and I'm just going to stick to like the newer stuff because I have limited space. Everything I own is going to be in within two suitcases and a backpack and a lot of that backpack is filled with my laptop so Whew, it is not going to lie. It is scary knowing that I'm going to like get rid of even more stuff because I already get, got rid of so much stuff when I did the first massive downsizing when I left Brisbane. So when I first left Brisbane, I had a whole household of stuff, including all the furniture I needed, a completely fully stocked kitchen, a uh, kitchen aid, a, this master, like master bakery stuff, so much kitchen stuff, amazing fridge, an amazing smart washing machine. Like I had all the stuff that you needed, a full on household. I had some great furniture, quality furniture that I did genuinely love and um, sold for super super cheap so the people got a great deal but yeah i had like a whole household of stuff a completely done household and i got rid of like 80 percent of everything i owned i pretty much kept clothes and craft stuff and now i'm about to get rid of another approximately 80 percent of the 80 percent wait so i got rid of like 80 percent of stuff originally so of the 20% of stuff I kept, and okay, I have bought a couple of stuff in the almost two years since, uh, I'm about to do another like approximately 80% cut and get rid of more stuff. So yeah, it's a little bit scary and daunting because I already got rid of so much and there are times when I really miss things like my easel or certain clothes. Like I have missed my Charmander dress so much. I kind of wish I kept the Charmander one instead of the Pikachu one, but um, you, know, you can't go back in time. Nothing really you can do about it. Just maybe I'll find another Charmander dress in future that I like. Probably not because the clothing company I use, Living Dead Clothing, kind of went out of business in 2020. So odds of me replacing it are probably on the low side, but still it'd be nice. It will be nice. I do miss my Charmander dress. But yeah, I have to do another massive, massive call and getting rid of so much stuff, including a whole heap of mermaid things and mermaid tiles, get rid of some tiaras and costumes. I have costumes in a box that I legitimately have not worn. They're brand new, never worn costumes that I just didn't really get around to like doing the shoots and stuff for. I was meant to do a shoot with Suicide Girls in 2020 and I got like a special koala puppet and everything. It was going to be like fireman thing because we had those massive bushfires. And then that got postponed because, you know, the panini. And it never really happened. Like we spoke about it a couple of times in 2021 and I think even last year. But like nothing really happened with it. 
So I have this entire costume that I organized for the Suicide Girl shoot, including a koala hand puppet prop. Now, again, it has never been worn. It's brand new, never been worn. And I still even have like the fireman's hat and stuff. So I have all these costumes and props and things that were put on the back burner because the shoots never happen. And they're literally brand new. So the thought of throwing out all these brand new costumes and clothes and props is a little bit heartbreaking because one, they were kind of expensive. And two, like they weren't, they weren't used. Throwing away old clothes is very different from like throwing away nearly brand new clothes or completely brand new clothes. And that is something that I get to deal with for the next two, three weeks. While I try to organize what I'm keeping and what I'm not keeping and what I'm giving away. By the way, giving away stuff, not as easy as you think. I mean, sure, we all lock our doors and stuff so we don't get like robbed. And yet when you want to give things away, not even selling cheap, like literally for free, giving things away for free. The amount of excuses people come up with to, one, jump on it, but then they can't pick it up because they want you to deliver it or whatever, is insane. Like, the item is free. You just have to come and get it. And yet there are still so many people who cannot manage that and want even more from you. And I do not drive. I've never learned how to drive. I do not have a driver's license and I do not have a car. So it's like, no, I cannot deliver this item to you. Can you post it? Of course, at my expense. They never offer to pay postage. They want it at your expense. And I'm like, you're getting this item, multiple items sometimes. I had a whole big bag of clothes for free that you can't come to pick up yourself. So you want me to pay an extra 50 or $60 just to post it to you? I'm like, I swear I almost got like PTSD from trying to do a Facebook marketplace because it was that insane. Anyway, I think I am going to uh, stop just randomly rambling and chatting. If you don't mind, though, this is like completely unscripted random video, so I have nothing really planned for it, and I'm just talking. But uh, I should probably concentrate a little bit on what I'm doing since I do want to have a more professional look and not my go-to normal looks, which I started pretty much doing. And since I want a little bit more, like, respectable hire me, look i should probably pay a bit more attention to what i'm doing right now so we're gonna do the good old time lapsing uh video and i'm gonna stop talking now eyebrows done now I did want them to be a little bit dark and not as demure as I normally do but you know how I mentioned that fallout like seriously look at that oops that's just the little fallout that came down like through this area I know I probably shouldn't be using a tissue to wipe the excess off but I have moisturizer underneath, so I, I'm trying to look at least a little bit after my skin. But um, yeah, we did the eyes and we did the eyebrows. Now, one of the good things that I know from years and years in the entertainment industry is photos and videos often mute your makeup. That's why you do like theater makeup or photo shoot makeup. And if you see it in person, it seems like it's really heavy. It's really dark. It's really packed on. So like a lot of your photo shoot makeup and like TV makeup doesn't look that great in real life in person, but ends up looking better on the photos or on the screen because it pops out. Whereas a more muted everyday makeup look, which might look very natural and great in person, 
It is like barely recognizable and barely noticed in photos and videos because it just doesn't like pop enough. So I did do my eyes a little bit darker than I would if I was say going in for an in-person interview. But that's because I want it to actually look like I did effort in presentation in the actual photo. So in case for some reason you happen to be new with like makeup or photos and content stuff. If you're doing photos and videos you do more makeup than you would in real life. Because the camera kind of like smooths and dulls things. So it doesn't pop as much. And darker, more obvious makeup is better <laughs> when you're taking photos or videos. So yeah, a, a little teeny tidbit. But now we can try the skin stuff. Um, as I said before, I did actually clean my skin makeup. So this is the one that's for the powder because it's big and fluffy. And this is the little flat one is what I use for like foundation because it's easy to just put and like dab. So these are nice and clean and bring that up to show that these are clean, like fresh brushes. So uh, it shouldn't like infect, you know, putting it on and testing out the two sides because it's new brushes. So it should be fine. In an ideal world, I'll have a second set of makeup brushes and I'll use two fresh brushes for both sides. So do clean brushes on one side, clean brushes on the other. But my new makeup brushes are still in their boxes and pack and I am saving them for Melbourne because I'm not going to keep these ones. So um, I'm not going to use them. Then we're just going to have to still get some like, so we're still going to get like some makeup contamination between the sides, but this is fun. This is a vlog. It's not a scientific process. Little contamination will be fine. But yeah, we're going to try. The Makeup Forever HD, which is my usual, which I absolutely love and which has been recommended for people who do like content and streaming. That's going to be on this side. So that's my left side. And the Sephora Best Skin Ever Glow with the little pink tint, which has great reviews on the Sephora website, but is literally 50% of the price. It is half the price. It's going to be on this side. And we're going to see if there is any difference. But like I said, the camera is really good at like melting and merging and smoothing makeup on your face as it is so you don't notice flaws in your makeup as much on camera or in photos as you might in real life so you'll see it on the camera but I will also have a look in the mirror which again not the best idea option because eyes mirrors there's a whole thing there too but I'm not gonna like find a person to stare at my face and critique it because that's a bit weird so mirror is going to be the best we can do, but if you can get a person to check it out, that would be the best option, but we can't do that. But yeah, let's test out the two different sides and see if it's worth it. Now, wait, wait, before I do that, I actually have the tiniest, smallest amount of this concealer left, but as you can see, this is also very, very... Very, very empty <laughs> there's very little left of this so this is probably gonna be the last time I can use this one as well now this one is just it was cheap but it's waterproof like the sticker they had waterproof tattoo covering so I actually got it originally as like a tattoo concealer it didn't actually work that great as tattoo concealer but it worked pretty good as skin concealer on the face and I think this was like it's not NYX it's Essence I just got it at like big W or came at one of those cheaper shops it was a really cheap concealer but it's been working absolutely fine this whole time aside from you know running out and it being empty but hey if you end up running out of makeup because you actually used it all instead of throwing half of it away or losing it somewhere I feel like that's a testament to that makeup right like that's a good thing because I cannot be the only person who is more likely to um, lose makeup or drop it or it spills and breaks or you forget it somewhere and like you don't finish using it you just have to replace it rather than finish using it right or it just gets old and you don't want to use it anymore because it's you know old and that's not great for your skin either so actually having this one and using it all the way to the end and trying to get that last little bit out like that that should be a testament to this very cheap concealer that I got like Big W or Kmart or something and has been working absolutely great this whole time. It all, and the waterproof bit has been true. I use this with mermaidy stuff and swimming stuff and underwater stuff and it honestly has been working great in the swimming pools and the ocean. So like recommend cheap cheap concealer but it has been pretty darn good. So yeah. 
Now let's just get this concealer in. And I realize I'm contaminating my freshly cleaned brush. So we are contaminating that, but that's okay. On the plus side, vlogging this and talking to you and chatting has actually made me way less stressed out. And I do feel a lot more calmer right now, which is probably a good thing. I know that you can't actually see like energies and stuff, but when I was a kid, I absolutely loved an author, Diana Wayne Jones. She had a series of books called the Crestomancy series. And it kind of like brings a little bit of quantum physics into fantasy. Crestomancy is special because his he has like all of his seven lives in the one person rather than being seven versions in seven parallel universes and stuff. But the Crestomancies also have like special individual skills. And one of them was like he could see smells. So even like talking on the phone, he could see these mothballs from his aunt come through because she always smelled off mothballs and he could physically see it. And a part of that has deeply influenced me. Because I am always petrified that if I smell bad, people can see it. <laughs> like, visibly see it. Like, I don't know, stink marks, kind of like a cartoon. Uh, another part is, like, in, energetically, I want to be in a good mood and stuff on photos and videos, especially for, like, important things, in case somebody can see it. Like, in case they're a crestomancy in real life and they see something. So, you know, be in the good positive mind frame and have a shower and I don't like perfume. Perfume's too strong for me. I prefer scented moisturizers instead. But like, yeah, use the moisturizers, be freshly washed, freshly showered, have clean hair and be in a good mood before photos and videos, just in case there's a crestomancy around who sees part of it. And that will reflect like way worse on you. <laughs> so concealer is done, which honestly, I feel like you can't really tell the difference. Now our uh, not very scientific experiment between the two, which is, you know, the whole point of this video. <laughs> so testing it finally. Woo! So I'll do the HD first because I know it and I love it. Maybe I shouldn't for something that's this important um, do like a testing makeup video. <laughs> but like I said, photos do like melt things in and hide things and like this is so empty i am literally struggling to get any pumps onto this at all like nothing is coming out so it was kind of important to do anyway because i'm not sure that there's enough makeup in here to use it for a full face so we're just going to do it on half and throw hair over the shoulder so i can do the you know blending down there this is just a really basic makeup because i don't know how to do things like contouring all right, let's do it half, right? Half a nose. Attempting to do half a nose. All right. It's really, really weird to do just half a nose. <laughs> is this a vlog or is this a makeup challenge? Now I will clean this brush. Oh yeah, you know how I'm running low on everything? This is how much makeup cleaner I have left. Alright, it's just not focusing. But that teeny weeny bit, that is the last of my makeup cleaner too. I am literally finishing like everything. I'm running out on absolutely everything. But we're going to try and prevent contamination as much as possible by even cleaning this brush after the first foundation before we do the second one. So that's the first half. Now we'll try the second one and we'll see if there is a visible difference for it to be literally double, double the price. All right, pretty new makeup. I really hope, look how, how satisfying is it when you get to rip that open? And we can rip it open together. Wow, open. But um, I was gonna say something and I have forgotten. Yep, yeah, do not remember, sorry. <laughs> this is like the worst vlog ever. Thank you for just sitting and chatting with me. <laughs> yeah, this one is half the price and I hope it is good. It's got, like I said, very good reviews. It's meant to be uh, the right color for my skin 
Oh, wow. It's very, uh, like the other one must be like little things that get absorbed really quickly. This one's quite thick, like really thick. Again, I'm not really a makeup person, so like, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but this one would be a lot more like watery. Maybe that's why it was good for build up and it would just like get absorbed a little bit into the brushes. And this one is just kind of like sitting there. Look how thick that is. It's not getting absorbed at all. It's just literally still sitting there. Hmm. So this one feels more like it feels this one looks more like paint already whereas the other one just kind of like it got absorbed in and i i'm a little bit worried now the downside of two adorable fluffy dogs everywhere is constantly getting long thin hairs on your face that are itchy <laughs> but I think I got it. all right so first of all I feel like this one didn't really go as far as this one even though this one gets absorbed but into the brush it just kind of like seems to spread easier this one sat like paint on the brush but it did feel like you needed a little bit more to cover everything so it didn't feel like it went as far. I'm just going to have a look in the direct sunlight and not the ring light to see if I can see much of a difference. All right, so I looked in the mirror, but um, okay, not the best mirror. In the bright daylight, at least, it doesn't look like there's a lot of difference. Like, both are absorbing well into the skin. They're not just, like, sitting right on the top and caking awkwardly. They covered pretty well. My big thing is I'm a redhead, so obviously I want to cover my freckles. And the fact that freckles coming in is a fashion thing seems scandalous to me. But um, I just want to pretty much cover freckles, and both of them seem to do that. Honestly, I can't tell a huge difference between the two. There is a little tone difference. This one seems like more slightly tan and a bit more color in the face than this side. Say I seemed a little bit paler, but I don't mind the pale look. So it wasn't a big difference, but honestly, like, I can't really tell the difference on myself when I'm comparing it to the bright daylight. I don't know if I can tell a difference to myself on the camera. Maybe I will on the computer, but like at the moment, it seems pretty good to me. Now, this one I feel like is not going to last as long as this one because one, it was a lot thicker on the brush. I feel like you needed a little bit more of it, but... Again, this is half the price. So as long as you don't need two times as much of this one than you have of this one, it's probably better value. Again, this one's only 25 millimeters compared to the 60. So even at double the cost, we're going, we're comparing 50, not 60, this is 30. Doubling the cost, we're going comparing 50 milliliters to 30 milliliters. But um, I don't know if that's particularly relevant. For like half the price, if you just need something like quick, I'm probably going to stick with this one because I genuinely cannot see the difference. Now, this is just foundation. We don't have any powder or anything. Up. So it's just the foundation in there. And yeah, I, I can't tell the difference. I genuinely cannot tell the difference. But um, we'll do powder now. So I just use my typical white deal powder, which again, look <laughs> how almost empty this is. I'm like literally running out of everything but we'll use the Dior powder I'm just gonna try and get it onto the top I got rid of the little poofle thing ages ago because I just use my brushes so I just kind of like shake it to get some through the holes at the top there but um, I'm gonna stick with the same one obviously not half and half of this and see if the powder sits any different on it compared to the HD makeup forever or the glow Sephora so Sephora glow best skin and HD is just Makeup Forever. Both I bought at Sephora. And now let's just do the same powder over the top. And I will see if that sits any different. Maybe one holds powder better or looks smoother. And if it, like maybe it'll last different. But I'm not going to know that till, you know, end of the day type thing. And again, for me, my skin makeup is mostly about hiding the freckles. So, any difference between the 
Let's see such yet. Honestly, I noticed more of a difference between my eyeshadow on each eye than I do the powder or the foundation. Like, I feel like my skin looks very even and the same on both sides. Like, you couldn't tell that I'm wearing two different foundations. I honestly cannot tell at all. It looks absolutely the same to me. And considering it, again, half price, that seems pretty good. So, like, does it look the same to you? It, I feel like it's the same on both sides. But we'll just finish up a little bit now. I don't know where my highlighter is, which is a bummer. So I just use like this little bronzer thingy. And this bronzer is now my blush. Because I got the bronzer for um, a cosplay where I wanted to make my skin look a little bit tan, but kind of like naturally. So I built it up over my arms and shoulders using this. It took forever. But now this is like now my blush. <laughs> so now we've got the bronzer blush to make the cheekbones so high. So I don't need to worry about how buccal fat removal is in. Which by the way, do not do. Buccal fat is important. Buccal fat, buccal fat, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But it is important. It is connected to so many parts and features of your face. And different like muscle groups and things don't get a buccal fat removal like your buccal fat it's there for a reason it is important and round faces are adorable you don't need to have like a gaunt look just you know stay awake for a couple of days and be stressed out you'll get that naturally but yeah no but the bronzer will give my high cheekbones and I don't have um, highlighter so I'm just gonna be using the teeny weeny bit brush I'll see that pretty much that's empty that thing there I'm going to use that as my highlight, even though there's pretty much absolutely nothing left. I need to find where I dropped my highlighter. I know it's somewhere. I think it just like fell out of a bag somewhere in the corners of this room. Or it's probably like under a suitcase or something. But hey, I have to organize all my clothes and boxes and get ready for Melbourne. So that is probably going to be the perfect time to find missing things. Like missing highlighters. So, uh, silver lining? Sort of? And I am also going to go with a festive holiday, a red lip, because I very rarely wear red lips. It's kind of like a Christmas color or a Valentine's Day color, you know, when you're wearing like red. But I think for these photos, I'm going to go with the cliche red lip, just because I feel like it's going to go well with the black dress. <laughs> so that's the reason. So let's try cliche red lip with this what do you think does my makeup look professional would you hire me for your company or role <laughs> maybe the red's too bright hmm now I'm not sure if that was maybe a mistake but I feel like bright lips with like neutrally almost eyes works I am gonna put on a black dress, like a black business style dress. I, again, wear usually bright colors and like cartoon characters. I don't really wear a lot of black. So that's gonna be different. But yeah, I'm gonna take my hair back out because it's just in a little bow clip. Probably not very businessy, but it is cute. So I'll take my hair out, put on a black dress and take a couple of photos to make me sort of seem professional oh, I have to also get rid of like this bag because look it's all peeled and ripped off completely almost it's just this tiny little bit left and I kind of want the rest of that to peel off so I can like paint the band with something else there's also this bit here so we've got like this bit here and that bit there and that's the last of the Christmas pattern on here and yeah once that comes off I might just help it with like a scrubber or something I'm gonna like paint it I'm thinking I might even use nail polish to paint it and like my my own custom band but yeah I have to change the band it's still good light but I kind of wanted to wait for golden hour um because you know golden hour is better for photos put on a black dress and try to seem like I can be professional and corporate with my um AI generated CV <laughs> on LinkedIn my main experience with LinkedIn is reading the LinkedIn lunatics reddit post so this is gonna be um, fun and interesting who knows? Maybe I'll mess up and I'll find myself on LinkedIn Lunatics. <laughs> but 
got my makeup done. We got to test out the new Sephora, which honestly, I feel like it's a win. Again, I'm running out of all my makeup, so getting this for now just to last for the next couple of weeks, and when I go to Melbourne, honestly, I'm happy with this. It was only $33. When I got this one, it was like $80, and now it's $66, and it seems absolutely the same to me as this one. I cannot tell any difference. I can't see any difference. I don't feel any difference. Like, it seems the same to me. I'm genuinely happy with it, but yeah. Before saying bye bye, because I will obviously show a little bit of the video when I am professional in my black business dress, which is ironically enough also black milk. So this dress is black milk, but it's the cute Disney black milk. And my black business formal dress is also black milk. It's just all black. <laughs> and it's got like little cap sleeves, because I feel like black and sleeves makes it like business formal attire. But yeah, we got the makeup. I'm going to put on the black dress. I'm going to take in those LinkedIn photos and who knows, maybe your girl can be corporate this year. <laughs> I mean, I'm still going to vlog and do videos and stuff, but not going to lie, it would be extra nice to have a stable form of income coming in so I can, you know, upgrade some equipment. My tripod will no longer be sinking. I can replace all my makeup that's running out. Like, it'll be good. It'll be good, right? So uh, with the power of YouTube, Fingers crossed <laughs> that it might work out. And just in case the end video is just me being like, oh, flapsy and posy and oh, taking photos. Thank you so much for joining me in this vlog where we just tried a new foundation and did makeup and chatted. And I genuinely can't even remember everything that I chatted about because my brain is frazzled. I'm a little stressed out. <laughs> I might have mentioned that. So my brain is frazzled. But hey, look, I have straight hair. That, well, sort of, it's hot and humid, so just a little bit of hot and humidity starts bringing the curls back in. Like, my hair doesn't stay straight for long, but it was freshly straightened when we started this video, and it's already kind of looking a little, mm, little not worth the hour of effort it took to try and straighten it. But yeah, we, we tried. We tried straightening it. Ugh. Straight hair, sort of, straight hair. This is super duper rare. <laughs> but thank you for joining me. I hope you're having an amazing day and a wonderful week. And I hope that all the stress is just on me and there is absolutely zero stress on you. Woo! <laughs> and there will be some flinting and posing and photos and stuff. But um, this is going to be the outro. Bye-bye. Bye! <laughs> So, not only am I running out of all my makeup, guess who just knocked over her tripod, stood on it while putting on the black dress, and broke her pink collapsible tripod. This girl! So, uh, yeah. Broke my tripod. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to replace that before the next three weeks is up. Well, maybe all this bad luck is a sign of good things to come. Hmm? <laughs>